Welcome back. Okay, so we're going to um, transition from menu to game, game to game over, and back in a bit more of an effective manner because at the moment it just sort of snaps to the frame that we're after. It works, but if you ever play a game, a successful game at least, there's a little bit more to it. Now, I'm not saying this is going to be, be uh, groundbreaking stuff, we're just going to have them tween in and out, but it puts a bit of something into it, a bit of movement, something to build the tension before the game starts. If the menu tweens out and the game has to tween in, you're building up the tension a bit. Because obviously it's a really exciting game and people are going to be biting their fingernails. To do it, we're actually going to set up a function that tweens everything for us, sort of automatically. No matter how much stuff or how little stuff we have on the screen, it's going to systematically go through it all, add a tween to it, and bring it in. So the best place to do it really is in the document class. So we're going to jump to the document class. I'm going to come up to the imports because I need to add some stuff to it. We need to add all the tween stuff. So I'm going to hop into the explosion class, copy the imports, go back to the document class, paste them in. So I've got all the tween stuff. And then down at the bottom of all the functions, I'm going to make a function to tween all screen content in. Okay, so we'll uh, make it private. Private function, and we'll call it tween in. It's not going to take any parameters, it's not going to return anything. It's just going to work through everything on screen, apply a tween to it, and set the tween running. So what we're actually going to need is a list of tweens because if you don't store your tweens it means there's no reference to them and Flash, whether you want to consider it a strength or a weakness, handles the garbage for you, the trash, trash collection. So if you, you make a tween and you don't store it somewhere, Flash assumes you're not using it anymore so it'll delete it, which might mean it deletes it halfway through the animation. To guard against it, we're going to make a private variable called tweens. We'll make it an array. And that will mean we have a reference to the tweens, so it's not going to delete them. If you're working in other programming languages, if you ever move on to things like C, you've got to be very particular about cleaning up after yourself. And uh, however you want to regard that in Flash, as a good thing or a bad thing, you don't have to worry about it. If you're going to progress to a stronger language, you're going to need to wrap your head around it. Anyway, that's enough waffling. Let's get this done. So let's um, loop through all on-screen content. So we're going to set up a for loop before bar i equals zero. If you're wondering why I use i all the time, it's just because it's i for integer. Bar i equals zero, i is less than num children. We've used that before when we're spawning ships, I think we're still using that for it at the moment, which we need to change. i plus plus. Here we want to make a tween for the current object. So it might even be worth saving a reference to the current object. Make a reference to the current object. We'll put var ob equals uh, get child at i. So that's how you access a child in a certain position on screen. So say this um, movie clip has got 10 children. We're going to loop through them. For each one, we're going to get the child at that particular index and hold it in this variable called ob. Now we'll make a tween, so uh, let's say var twa tween equals new tween. I told it to be a tween so that we get the uh, smart code here, although the stuff for the tween class isn't very smart, just calling it arg0. There's six things we need to use, an optional seventh that we're not going to use. The first one, if you remember back, is the object you want to tween, so I want to tween tw. Second argument is a string value representing the property you want to tween. In this case, I'm going to make them move sideward, so I'm going to use the rex property. 
third one is the function for easing. So in this case, let's start with maybe a bounce dot ease out. We can come back and edit that. The fourth bit is the starting value. So let's take where the object is and move it to the left. So we'll say ob.x minus stage dot stage width. So we're going to move it the whole width of the screen to the side, to the left. And you notice now that we're sort of running out of space, which makes it a good point to show you a little trick. When you're doing parameters arguments like this, you can space, you can use white space, you can put an enter after every comma. Not only does it help you space them out, but it means you can comment them. So we could put comments here. The object to tween. Property to tween. The easing function to use. <coughs> Starting value. And then the end value, we just want it to end where it's actually positioned on screen. So ob.x end value and the final one is the duration so I want a bit of a difference in the duration for each each object so I'm going to start with a flat value of say 30 but then I'm going to add open brackets i times 10 so the first child will take 30 frames, the next one will take 40, and then 50, and 60, and so on, just to give it a bit of difference. And we'll close the brackets there, so we'll close the function there. Time to take. Tab back, and we'll add the tween to the list. So, add the tween to the list of tween. Tweens dot push twa. Now there's one problem at the moment, we haven't actually made this array. You could do that in the constructor, but I'm going to make a new array every time. So make tweens a brand new array. Deleting old tweens. That'll delete the old tweens. No, I don't know why I semicolon that. So we'll just do tweens equals new array. Every time we call this tween in function, it'll basically delete itself. And that should work now. If we save that, go to our timeline and click on the menu. When we stop, or rather just before we stop, it really doesn't matter where we type this, it could go anywhere. I'm just going to put tween in. And put tween all the content in. Save it and test it. Oh, <laughs> broke it. What have I done wrong? Come on, you must have spotted it. Cannot access property or method of a null object reference. Tween set position. Tween in in frame two. So something wrong in this. Ob. Tweening the object, not the tween. Tween can't tween itself. So we're actually tweening the object not the tween. Save it and test it. And there we go. Our menu bounces in. Maybe not the most convincing transition. Let's try a different sort of easing. So you can uh, you can play about with this. Let's try elastic. Save it, test it. That was a bit too fast. Maybe try changing the ease out to ease in. Well, that was different, but try ease in out. That's not too bad. I think the problem is it's a bit fast, so we could change this value of 30, make it a default of 60. That's not too far away from the example that I uh, started the series with. Don't know why I clicked start. We could try a different type. We could go with uh, regular easing. Very boring. That would have to be faster to make it worthwhile. Put it down to 20. What other easing types are there? 
if you do want to see them all, you could go back to your import up at the top, delete the star and the dot and type the dot in and you get a list there. So we've tried bounce and elastic. Let's give back a go. So put the star back and let's try back. Hmm. I actually think I'll stick with that. You could always try other bits as well. You could try changing the X to Y. Whoa. Oh yeah. <laughs> Need to change these to Y if I'm going to change the value. Boink. It's a bit different. Could um, make it so they start off the bottom instead of off the top. But I'm going to undo that. Go back to X. Yeah. So that's tweening in. That's probably the easier bit. Save that. And we'll apply it to the other bits. So let's go to the FLA. To the timeline. And in the game, before we start the game, we'll tween in the game as well. So we just use tween in again. And we'll do it to the game over as well. Tween in. Let's save it and test. So the menu tweens in. Start the game. The game tweens in. We'll have to delay the start of the game for that to make sense. And then the game over tweens in. We go back. The menu tweens in again. Game tweens in again, we quickly die, and the game over tweens in. So let's work on tweening out now. So I'm going to go back to the document class, and I'm going to make a function to tween all the content out. So I'm going to copy the start of that function. Call it tween out update the comment and this time there's a handy little function of a tween called yo-yo so we're going to yo-yo the tweens the existing tweens which means that for this to actually work properly we're going to have to make sure that everything tweens in if something doesn't tween in and then we try to tween it out there won't be the existing tweens or at least not the ones we're thinking of Uh, I'm going to loop through them all, loop through all the tweens. So let's copy this for loop. Loop through all the existing tweens. So instead of num children, it's going to be tweens dot length. And for each tween, we want to yo-yo it. So Yo yo tween. So if we do tweens, I dot yo yo. Save it. Let's just quickly edit something in the timeline so we can check it's working. I'm going to go to my menu frame. So I'm on the menu, and here's the script for it. So instead, right, we're going to have to go at the back to the document class. When we click to start game, so find the start game function. Instead of going to a label, let's just comment that out for a second and try tween out. Comment it. Tween content out. Save it and test it. And there we go. The tween reverses. But we have the problem that we're not going anywhere now. So what we're going to have to do... couple of things actually. We're going to have to store a reference to the frame we want to go to. Then we're going to have to add an event listener to one of our tweens for when it finishes. When the last tween finishes we want to go to our desired frame label. So there's quite a lot going on there. Yes. So tween out function here 
uh, when we're looping through them, it's the tween in, tween out function, when we're yo-yoing them, we'll say here, if this is the last tween, so if i equals equals tweens dot length minus one, add an event listener to this tween. So we'll do tweens i dot add event listener tween event dot motion finish. So when the tween finishes, we want to, well actually we want to go to frame label. So let's have a look at our function that already exists. Could we work with it? Where is it? Have I gone past it? There's a go to label function. I'm being blind. That's it. We could make use of that, but it would mean adjusting it to take a tween event. So we'll leave it as it is. We'll make a new function. We'll call it tweened out. Similar function name, but different enough. Let's make that function. Private function tweened out. Why am I commenting it? I probably should comment it though. <coughs> the function to run when all tweens are complete. Tweened out, responding to a tween event, so t tween event. And we want to jump to a desired frame, so what we're going to have to do is store a frame label somewhere. We're going to have to have a variable to store it. So let's say here, um, jump to the desired frame. So this desired frame that we use up here, desired label, and that's okay as it is there. Let's go up to the, the properties of the, the, yeah, the variables in the document class. We'll make a new one, private, private var um, target frame of type string. And just as a placeholder, just so there's always at least one value in the constructor here. I'm going to delete that because that's really annoying. That trace. I'll do target frame equals menu. Just so by default we'll target the menu. <coughs> but what we want to do in our tween tween out function, sorry, in our tweened out function, we want to call the go to label and we'll use target frame here. So what we're going to have to do before we tween things out we're going to have to set this target frame and that should work. So for example in the function where we start game instead of just tweening out set the target frame. So target frame equals game and tween out. Same with the return to menu. Instead of just going to the menu, we'll copy this, replace all this here. Set the target frame. Target frame is menu and tween out. There's the game over one. Here with the game over, instead of just jumping to it, we'll paste that in. Target frame will be game over instead of game. Save it and test it. Tween in, quick start game, it tweens out. We go to the game which tweens in. When we die, it tweens out, and we go to the game over that tweens in. Fingers crossed, that'll go back to the menu, that'll tween out, and that'll tween in. Well, isn't that lucky? That worked first time. That was totally unexpected. <laughs> Ye of little confidence. That's a, a decent time length for a video. I think 20 minutes, so we'll leave it at that for this one. I think I've probably got time to do a couple more as well, so we might be in for a big night. I'll see you soon.